be making basics. What's going on, y'all? It's Evan J. Back again with another video. In this lecture, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be covering uh, the basis, the basics of adding reverb and delay to your tracks. Now, rules of thumb: you don't want to overdo it. Okay, sometimes it doesn't need to be added. Okay, you don't want to always add this, but um, on tracks like where you have a star instrument, you might want to consider adding it to that star instrument or adding it to certain other instruments to create certain effects. So I'm going to show you what I got going on here. We're going to add just a little bit of reverb to this guitar. I actually already added it um, before I processed the track, but I'm going to add a little bit more just to live it up just a little bit. So again, what we're going to be using is the Valhalla um, Valhalla reverb and I'm going to go in here and get that guy. So we'll put him on here. Thing is to keep in mind with using this plugin, this is the mix. This is how much reverb and um, of the effect is going to be going to this. All right. Over here is going to be the depth, like how, uh, like say if you're in a room, all right, let's say that you're in a dome, uh, you know, the closer you are to like say the stage compared to how like farther away you are. So you're going to hear more echo with more depth compared to if you're right up on stage, you're not going to hear a whole lot of echo. You feel me? Uh, this high cut, what that's going to do is it's going to give you more of a higher or a brighter vibe with the uh, echo or a lower vibe with the echo. And I'll show you how it sounds there. The delay or decay, that's going to be how, um, how much it extends out and pre-delay, pre uh, we're, we're going to cover that actually as we go into it. So let's just jump into it, man. I mean, so get yeah, my bad here. So the first thing you want to do is bring this, um, bring this down to zero. Okay. Cause you don't want it to be punching through yet. And so listen to it and then slowly you start to bring this up and then affect how it sounds based on that. So let's check it out. You hear how that's too much? So we can take that depth that back if you want to. So basically with this, you want to pretty much play around with it to where you can hear the delay, but it's not overpowering it. Because when you put it back in the mix, if it says it's turned up too much, it's going to sound horrible. I'm going to turn it up and then turn it down. You'll see what I'm saying. So, yeah, I mean, you can hear it, but you can't really hear it, but it's there enough to where it adds a little extra umph and body to the mix. So. Again, if you want it to, if you want the, the sound to hold on longer and kind of echo and echo and echo, this, this, this decay is what you want to push up and down the pre delay. Um, I usually kind of keep that low, you know what I mean? Okay, cool. 
So that's pretty much the main thing I'm going to add a little bit of reverb to is that guitar. I don't want to overly add it to anything else. Like think about if I put it on the on the uh, on the flute too, you know, and then also this deep deep this detuned sample is it's just gonna muddy up the mix. So you were usually when it comes to uh, like the reverb, you want to pick like one or maybe two instruments that you would do just to kind of you know make it seem a, you know just just to add a little flavor to your mix. You feel me? So usually. Here, a little trick here is you can add a little bit of reverb to your hi hat. Um, you're gonna, of course, want to turn this pre delay down and this decay down a little bit and even the depth down a little. But you add it to the hi hat and it can actually give a little bit of a cool vibe to that. So let's listen to it. compared to dry it works but um, I think it's gonna add a little bit of flavor to it and you always want to whenever you do something just check to make sure it actually makes sense with the mix if it doesn't make sense with the mix we'll just take it off you know what I'm saying that's simple So now that's that's the reverb again. You know it's there, but you don't necessarily hear it because it's not like overwhelming the track. But if like say if I was to take the delay completely off of these tracks, you'll see a difference. So like I'll take it off of that. I also take it off of here. Uh, what was it? The hi hat. Now this one right here, this this flute, it actually could use a little bit of a reverb because and the real only reason why I say this is because I don't feel like it's clashing too bad with this. I'm gonna add some reverb to that. So let's talk about this reverb one more time. I didn't really get into too much detail on the actual plugin because I wanted to teach you the concept of it and show you that this is a real good sounding plugin. So, um, but a cool few things here, you can switch this from red to blue, kind of a cool thing. Um, you could also change you know, they have some little preset settings here. This, you know, again, it goes on some delays and, and just the effects of how that reverb is going to sound. You could also select some uh, reverb modes here. You got large room, medium room, bright room, different, different things like that. Be honest with you, I usually just use this large room because you can affect how that large room is going to sound by messing with the knobs. If you do want 
the reverb to just hit on certain frequencies, you can mess with this stuff here. Again, rule of thumb, keep things simple. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna, all right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is cover um, how to use the delay, okay? Again, this is something that you wanna use sparingly. Uh, you don't wanna put it on certain instruments that like drag out or that are a little too busy. I would recommend putting the delay on something that's more simple, um, subtle. Something like this, what? You know what I mean? You know, you can see that it comes in every other bar. It's not like super busy. Like this guitar sound, if I put the delay on that, it's just gonna be too much. You feel what I'm saying? It's gonna be way too much going on with that. So we're not gonna put it on the guitar or any of the flutes or anything like that. Of course, you don't wanna put delay on a kick drum or even on a snare drum. You can do it sometimes, but for the most part, you really wanna kinda keep those dry. You feel me? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over here to this what sample. I'm just gonna play it real quick. So I'm gonna add a little bit of delay to that. So what we're gonna do, is we'll come down here to our audio units, waves, plugins, go to this H and everything is actually, um, if you look at here, everything is alphabetized. So we can go to H delay, stereo. And this is what we come up with here. Now, the first thing you want to do when you pull this up is go over here to the top right where it says dry and wet and bring that down. OK, because if you don't, it's going to have a huge feedback and huge, it's, it's, it's going to sound horrible. So bring it all the way down to zero initially. Bring this feedback down to zero initially. And then what you want to do is click on BPM and then do what's called a right click and click on learn. And then what you could do is you have this plugin open. You're gonna just push play and it's gonna learn the BPM of the actual session. All right, cool, so once you do that, it learned it, you just click over the host and you're good to go. Now, what we're gonna see here is uh, click on the host and click back over to BPM. And so what we're gonna see here is that basically you can do a couple of different things. You can make this uh, delay sound sound um, like come through a high pass filter or a low pass filter. You can make it sound like a low fi vibe to it. There's a whole lot of stuff you could do to it. Keep it simple, but uh, you have presets too that you can work with. But basically, we're gonna go ahead and play it. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that feedback up a little bit and then bring this wet in a little bit so you can hear it. All right, so let's, that sounds pretty cool. Let's listen to it with the music. pretty cool like I said I can take some of this you see like you do the high pass you'll hear more of the high of that revert or that delay compared to the low And actually, I like that sound because it actually sounds a little more cleaner that way. Because like, I actually like it come, like cutting out some of that low or cutting out some of the high end and do a low pass on it because you'll you'll basically hear the majority of the 
original sound and then you'll just hear an echo of the other sound but it'll, it won't sound so like clashy you feel me so let's just listen to it So y'all, that was that. I mean, honestly, I couldn't go into more detail with the, the with this, but for the most part, man, you know, you just really want to play around with this. Make sure you have the best BPM or the, the BPM is matched. Um, make sure that it's on point as far as like you don't want this to be up too high. You don't want this feedback to be feedback in too much. And then keep in mind that you can mess with the uh, high pass or low pass of the actual sound of the delay. So. Y'all have questions, man, let me know. But for the most part, I feel like this is a pretty pretty uh, good overview of, of how to add delay. You want to pick the right instruments to do that with. You don't want to put it on, you know, delay on like hi-hats. You know, don't do it too much on snares. Definitely not on kicks. And you want to do use it sparingly, meaning you don't want to, you know, overdo it. You know what I mean? So thanks for watching, y'all. I'll see you in the next lecture.